Good. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, since this will be the last time um, we get to meet uh, until uh, we were, I know we'll meet uh, on the 28th, actually, on Wednesday, uh, the, the week after Christmas. We'll, we're going to move this press conference to Wednesday at 10, but um, wish everybody uh, the best and safest of holidays. Um, I want to give you a few updates, some follow-up from last week, and then uh, we'll get to, in, to some more news and notes. Uh, we had some conversation about Triumph last week. Um, we have had uh, our internal meetings, and um, we're confirming that we're going to take a, a phase, how we're going to revise um, what you have already seen previously is we're going to take a more phased approach uh, to our ask. Um, we are working on that, so more to come in terms of details, but uh, we're going to focus on a phase one of the Triumph ask being around the Center for Maritime Excellence. Um, we will, again, we're continuing to work through details of exactly what those asks will be, but um, I would say if you, if you looked at the holistic um, ask that was presented in the pre-app last time, um, th there'll be similarities to um, the content, but just how we phase it will be, a, will be different. And so uh, we're, our intent, I would tell you right now, is to move ahead with a phase one approach uh, that will be focused around the Center for Maritime Excellence. And um, so we'll, uh, I promised you some kind of update, and that is our update as we sit here today. We're still continuing to work through exactly what those asks will be, what the amount is, and all of those things. But we're, we're working through the proper channels. Triumph staff, our port staff, has been amazing and adaptive to, um, at the end of the day, what we want is we want something that gets funded and gets moving. So. Um, so we're going to take that approach and we'll still continue to look at some phase two, phase three opportunities. And we're basing that around what I mentioned to you last week, which is um, we know and Triumph has plenty of precedent that they like to see success with phase one and they're willing to fund a phase two. So um, using that knowledge and that insight, that's the direction that we're going to go with our, um, with our ask. Um, yeah, go ahead. Jim. Mayor, um, in, in the first iteration of this, mm -hmm. what uh, Clark Merritt called Vision 2022, uh, phase one was the infrastructure improvements to the maritime operations, roads, docks, piers. Yep. Phase two was Maritime Center of Excellence. What you're saying now is the Triumph Ass phase one will go to the Center for Maritime Excellence. Now you had, everybody had said that was uh, focused originally on the New York Yacht Club and the American Magic uh, operation over there, is that still what's driving this phase one? No, I, I would say, well, first let me speak to, to phase two versus phase one. There could be, I don't want to say that that it, it's going to be pack packaged exactly like just flipping them. There may be some infrastructure pieces that are in phase one. So just to be clear, I don't want um, it to say that we're literally just flip-flopping what they were previously. There could be some spillover, so to speak, that that is infrastructure related within phase one. But again, that's what we're kind of working through right now. And uh, we'll continue to have meetings this week uh, to define exactly what will be in phase one and will be in phase two. But to your question, if you were to, if we were to headline both of those phases, then yes, that would be a flip of going to maritime excellence first and then um, and, and I want to be clear, that does not mean that we plan to uh, mothball any kind of phase two um, infrastructure ask. Those, those are needs uh, for the port and something that could really help spur economic development here. So uh, we do not lack interest in a phase two. We, what we want to do is we want to get phase one up and going. Well, we feel really good about that direction. And then, uh, you know, phase two, can't put a timeline on it, but a phase two in, re in relatively short order, we could come back with a, a potential phase two ask. So uh, uh, what Scott Luth said at the delegation meeting about the projects he was excited about, um, are these centered at the Maritime Center of Excellence, that block that was shown in the map uh, where these activities would occur? Yeah, that is part of it. And, and what I could say probably now, what I, could, what I can tell you now would be yes, some parts of that, whether that was site work, whether that was some, there will be some piece of the additional portion of the Center for Maritime Excellence um, that will be involved in phase one. But as I said, not we're not trying to 
uh, be evasive with details, we're working out the details. So we're, I don't want to make it sound like we're um, not being forthcoming. But at the, at the end of the day, we're using this week and really these next couple of weeks um, to, to hone in exactly on ex what those phase one bullets will be. But what we do know at this moment and the update for you this week is we are going to focus around Center for Maritime Excellence in phase one. I guess we'll do questions on, the, on this now. I guess um, CMEX had talked about doing an expansion of their operations there, and I think that was, if I remember correctly, it was part of the, the matching plan in the time frame. I guess how does that stand now with this? Is, is phase one going to be focusing on the Center for Maritime Excellence? Is, or is the city moving out on those matching funds? No. No. Yeah, still very much in play. Um, and uh, whether CMEX is involved in phase one or if CMEX becomes a centerpiece of phase two uh, and all of that, yeah, we will not. It's the reason we're doing all of this due diligence right now is that we want to, what, we did not want to lose some potential value of what the port brings to the table to get that Triumph Ask. That's why we've, we've been very meticulous to go through this. And that's why I give a lot of credit to our port staff and Triumph um, staff for being very helpful with us. To, um, but we are not, this is not um, something that, that we are, or are, are trying to necessarily rush. We have urgency, but we want to make sure that, to your question, Jim, that we get that right, that what, what we're asking for, we're not leaving something on the table as, as it pertains to jobs, as it pertains to infrastructure. Um, and um, so that, whether that, whether CMEX is in phase one or it's not, or portions of it are or it's not, what we're still working through, that does not mean that in a potential phase two that we would lose that value so to speak mayor the, the warehouse four the multi-purpose sports mm -hmm. uh, idea that was over there yep. required some infrastructure changes the fences and the security mm -hmm. is that part of this as well where is pickleball yeah in oh, terms of triumph i would say as at this moment um as of triumph that, that is not um part of of what a phase one ask would be but again You'll have to just bear with us because we're still working through what those details are. Um, and on that topic, uh, you know, we are we are um, still in contract negotiations uh, going back and forth between um, the the company that would run Warehouse Four and the city. Uh, but but we still feel very positive about um, that. And no specific timeline. You know, with the holidays and everything, January might be a little bit tall of an order to see that go to council. Um, but uh, I, I would imagine at, at this at this moment, you know, that February would be a very real possibility to have, uh, you know, a contract uh, or to bring to council. Um, and then I'll go through a couple other little um, things, and then certainly feel free to answer or any question or give me any questions that you have. Um, during the coming weeks, it's kind of just another preview for this. We'll, uh, the plan is to talk about this on the 28th. Um, we're coming out. You know, I spent a lot of time knocking on a lot of doors and talking about, you know, public safety being our number one focus here in our community. Um, we'll, we'll be rolling out some details of, uh, of a safer Pensacola, a 2023 safer Pensacola initiative, and it'll outline some additional investments in tools, staffing, technology, um, and capital maintenance to help support our police and fire departments. It's things that are much needed, um, and it will really be across the board in terms of, um, so uh, I'll have those details to give you guys at the 1228 meeting. Few other notes roger scott tennis center bids have come back um, and we've received and verified four which is great news um, for us and a positive step forward um, obviously there's still a lot of um, um, you know procedural things to deal with um, you know that we're looking at and reviewing these bids and all that but what i would say in a general sense is we are once with four bids and you know i would say in the building we feel pretty good about um, that that's one step closer to getting this the uh, Roger Scott tennis courts finally uh, off and going and and uh, you know we've talked a lot about them and and that so we, we were very pleased to see that kind of interest and that step forward to uh, get those tennis courts done um, I did mention at the legislative delegation uh, meetings some of the things that we're going to be focused on obviously uh, in a general sense any efforts that uh, we will see from the house in the uh, and Senate on attainable housing. Also the airport, uh, the design uh, expense for the new airport terminal is, is a very, very high priority. That may not come through a legislative ask. That is not the intent right now. 
Uh, we've had great conversations and I'm, uh, I'm grateful for everyone at FDOT that, that they know our urgency to be able to get this done. And as I've told you guys up from up here already, you know, one day without uh, another day without the design is another day without the terminal. You know, we can't get the dominoes moving until we have this. And that's why it's such a high priority is one year is a long time to wait. Um, and so we've had great conversations and, and again, give credit to Senator Broxson, Representative Andrade and FDOT um, that I, I feel safe in saying that everyone knows that the priority is there and that the urgency is there to get that done. Uh, so that may not come through a, a legislative ask, but I would say it's certainly a priority for us. Um, and then uh, the Veterans Memorial Park restroom, uh, that, that is another, uh, uh, let, that is a legislative ask that we plan on taking and, um, and we will take it on behalf of the city. We hope that that perhaps would give it a little more success. We've tried this a couple times, but if the ask comes from the city, you know, we think that that could add some extra muscle in terms of being able to, to get it done. And um, so those are our priorities right now. Um, what, one other note, um, we've had some uh, you know, very early conversations uh, about, uh, our, there's been conversations in the community about the, the NAS museum and the ability to get it open. And what I'll tell you is, you know, this week we have let the Navy know that the city of Pensacola is ready and willing to make whatever, to do whatever we possibly can to be a partner, a supportive partner in um, whatever tactic they would take on to get the museum open. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of moving parts of that, things that, that you know, the Navy, um, I appreciate and respect um, them looking into uh, you know options that's you know their information they've got their own set of procedures and rules but I what I'll say is this week we we let the Navy know that um, we are at the ready to do whatever we can do to, to make sure um, that we get that museum open and we know the value that it is to our community to our veteran community and um, so hopefully uh, more to come in the coming months about uh, any potential solution um, Cold weather, I, I want to go over this quickly. And you guys have some notes, I know, that, that Casey, that will give you all the details. Um, but the National Weather Service is advising extremely cold temperatures and windy conditions uh, starting December 20, uh, 22nd through the Christmas weekend. Wind chill values are going to be in the teens and um, 20s uh, possible, those are possible Thursday night through Saturday night. Um, individuals in need shelter can call 211 for assistance. Also know, I've, I've had a conversation with Chief Randall that PPD will be proactive while on their routes to make sure that we get this information delineated. And right before I walked up here, uh, Chief Craner um, let me know that Waterfront Mission is a 24 seven warming shelter that will be open from Thursday to Sunday. So, um, you know, I, we really appreciate our media partners helping getting that word out um, that you can call 211 for assistance. Um, and, uh, you know, just make sure that we're practicing cold weather safety and, and also fire safety with space heaters and things like that. Holiday closures, uh, City Hall will be closed, um, or all City of Pensacola offices will be uh, closed in facilities Monday, December 26th and Tuesday, December 27th, and Monday, January 2nd for Christmas and New Year's. Um, all city sanitation customers will experience a change of schedule the week of Christmas and New Year's Day. So uh, make sure you mark that on your calendar. Um, and the customers, will, of course, will, as we do with holidays, will receive pickup one day later than they're normally scheduled on the week of December 25th and the week of January 1st. So uh, be patient with us. Make sure you mark that down and know that if, you, if your trash gets picked up Wednesday normally, it'll get picked up Thursday on those two weeks. But uh, with that, that's it. And happy to take any questions. Yeah. yeah. I guess uh, on the cold weather uh, that's coming up, is, is the city, are you expecting any issues at the airport or anything like that? Obviously with weather, you know, it's it's a moving target. Um, what I'll tell you is you know, Chief Craner does a great job with emergency operations. Um, we had a meeting, this came up, was a big topic in our meeting on Monday, and uh, we'll continue hour by hour, day by day to, to monitor any um, any potential changes. I would say at this time, we have not been notified of closures, schedule changes at the airport. I know we're seeing that up in the Northeast, you know, obviously a much uh, more severe situation. So I, I, I guess I would advise our Pensacolians that if they are flying that direction right now to make sure you continue to look at, um, you know, your airline applications and make sure, you know, of course you can go to the Pensacola, um, 
Pensacola Airport website and continue to be vigilant in monitoring your um, schedules. I don't want to make it, I can't promise what will or won't happen, but I would say at this juncture, as we sit here Tuesday, um, that we have not been notified of any uh, significant changes on that front. And then, uh, you mentioned the shelters and column 211. I guess, is there any, anything else being done to uh, maybe take care of uh, homeless populations that are going to be out? Yeah, uh, as we said, we you know that's why we want to get that information out to make sure that um, uh, that you can find those locations. Again, Waterfront Mission um, is a 24/7 warming shelter. Uh, at this point, uh, Thursday through that will start Thursday and run through Sunday. Um, and and you know this is not a new thing this year. Um, you know our PPD, you know they do an awesome job, and when they're out and about. Um, they, they have they are equipped with this information our first responders are equipped with this information so um, they do a great job of, of making sure that if uh, you know they see someone out there that it may, they get them that information that's um, you know again that you know you, you're going from call to call and and you're trying to uh, you know handle um, situations as they come up but they do a really good job of um, you know working double duty and making sure that those folks that look like that they may need that information or where they need to go that we're getting it out there and that's that's something we had a conversation about on monday anything else i guess um, any any updates uh, on the uh, casket flights kind of issue that came up last week? um what i'd say is we're looking into um that ordinance um no no update uh, at this time but we're we're looking into that ordinance how it operates there was some clarification that that ordinance about one bar per block actually is a city uh citywide it doesn't seem like it no, i misspoke it doesn't seem like it because we don't really deal with it other than in these couple of blocks and so um my interaction with it as uh someone who had bars on uh garden street and um and had uh, and, and had inquired about Palafox Street. That was my only interaction with it. But um, you know, you got to look at both sides of that. You know, there, there's a reason that that ordinance is in place. So the idea was that you know that there wouldn't be a bar at every single address down Palafox Street for whoever put that in. You got to balance that with also you know we do have a, a vibrant downtown core. And then and and what does that mean for something that was on the books? A couple of decades ago may not still be the, the right thing or the, the so that's what we're looking into so no no decision on that yet um and uh, but but we're looking into it I, I had a question on that because the the sidewalk uh next to the wine bar at least on the city's gis system doesn't appear as a public right away so that's kind of interesting because there's so many bars in that one spot yeah so um we'd have i'd have to have um you know leslie or, or uh, sherry you know speak to the specifics of how it is on, on gis but what i'll tell you is i know that as of right now and and as of when i learned about this ordinance a few years ago um it has been that that has stayed consistent that that as a public right-of-way has been tr treated as a corner so um, I can't speak to anything else outside of that. That's that that is not a new change or a modification that I'm aware of. As long as I've known about this rule, that that has been how it's been treated. Anything else? Yeah. Could you postpone your transition team meeting? Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to add? Sure. To that? Yeah. No. Thanks for asking. I should have given you that update. So, um, yeah. Nothing other than just uh, the logistics of. I, I joked on. On the radio this morning i said no one's uh, ever charged me with not having enough ambition i'm trying to get a, a transition report to myself uh, <laughs> by december 19th you know and um, obviously it's a difficult time a lot of moving parts with design so n nothing but procedural uh, you know complexity that and then when you add scheduling conflicts of you know getting 29 people in the same room for the final meeting which is important to us um, what i'll say is we've tentatively rescheduled it for January 11th at 8 30 is that correct and um and so that would be as of now you know um that will be our plan moving forward is to after the holiday and and uh we just didn't want to kind of back to what we were talking about on a different topic we didn't want to rush something and get it out and not have people who've worked hard on it for three or four months not be able to to be there when the report is voted on those kinds of things so 
Um, so we thought the more prudent approach would be to do it after the holiday. All right. Well, that's it. Same thing. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll see you on the 28th.